we have come a long way with North Korea. I hope to have a very successful meeting. If we don't think it's going to be successful, Mark, we won't have it. We won't have it. Uh, if I think that it's a meeting that is not going to be fruitful, we're not going to go. If the meeting when I'm there is not fruitful, I will respectfully leave the meeting. President Trump on that pending nuclear assembly with North Korea. I want to talk about that more now with the chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Bob Corker of Tennessee. Senator Corker, thank you for joining us this morning. The president struck a more optimistic note in a tweet on Friday after that announcement from Kim Jong-un about freezing nuclear tests, suspending them, closing a major test site. The president saying, this is very good news for North Korea and the world. Big progress. Look forward to our summit. You share that optimism? Look, I'm glad they're meeting. I think all of us look at this with great caution and skepticism that's been going on for 25 years. And obviously, uh, Kim Jong-un has learned about public relations and is setting it up well for him. But I think everyone uh, that's been around this uh, looks at this uh, It's just the beginning. Uh, it may lead to something, may not. Um, let's make sure the meeting and the context for it is all set up and in the appropriate manner. But, let's dig uh, into what we'll that. Yeah, let's dig into what that means because a lot of people have pointed out that the concessions that Kim Jong Un has made are pretty easily reversible. He's made them before, That's right. and that it's going to set up the expectation for concessions from President Trump. So is this a, is this a, a danger? You know, some people talk about a freeze trap here, referring to that nuclear freeze that President Trump gives too much to get the meeting. Yeah, I think, uh, I think people are well aware of exactly what you're saying. I don't see us giving, any, giving up anything. I hope we will not. We'll con the, the, the policy right now is continue to put pressure on until something happens that's productive. But this can be easily reversed. Um, he obviously, as I've mentioned, has learned a lot about public relations. But, uh, you know, I, I think the president has people around him. You look at John Bolton, a, a great skeptic, uh, who will uh, warn of any uh, easing that might be considered. Is it realistic to think that Kim Jong-un is actually going to give up his nuclear weapons? You know, George, you know this. He views having deliverable nuclear weapons as his ticket to dying as an old man in his bed. He saw what happened with Gaddafi. Uh, Gaddafi's a dead man now because he gave up his nuclear weapons. And so um, to think that somebody's going to go in and charm him out of that uh, is not realistic. Is there some progress that can be made? I hope so. But, uh, uh, you know, it's, it, that's a big hurdle. So, so lay, lay that out then there. What is the best case for, one, this summit if it happens, and two, longer-term negotiations with the North? Well, of course, best case is denuclearization, I mean, obviously. Um, is it realistic that he's just willy-nilly going to do that? Absolutely not. Um, but, you know, progress can be made, um, freezing the program. Uh, who knows what, he's, what his ambitions are as it relates to South Korea. Um, but look, I think we go into this knowing we've got a huge problem. He's gone way down the road with his nuclear activity, uh, very close to having something that's of danger to the United States. And I think uh, beginning discussions, we should hope for the biggest and just see where it goes. Next, uh, this is all happening, the potential summit, as the next deadline is coming up on the Iran nuclear deal, May 12th. The president said that's he's right. going to rip up the deal. What impact will that have on a potential North Korea summit? What message will that send? To Kim Jong Un. So you know, I've been asked this a lot, and and I do think if nothing changes with the three European members we're dealing with right now in a framework, I do think he will move away from the agreement on May 12th. I don't think there's any question about it. Merkel's coming in, Macron's coming in. Maybe something changes in the interim. As it relates to this young leader and how he might view that, again, I go back to my first statement, and that is. Um, He's got such a bigger issue, and that his his own survival, uh, potentially regime change, that type of thing. So, because of the unique nature of him and unique nature of our president, um, I don't, I'm not sure that really um, us moving away from the Iran nuclear deal will have any impact on his thinking. I'm just being honest. I have used that argument uh, honestly, okay, but as I look at what he really cares about. Uh, I don't think it's going to have that much impact on him. You've if, also been fact, asked. I don't think it'll have any. You, you've also been asked a lot about President Trump, and, and what you say seems to be tend, depend a little bit on the day 
of the week. Sometimes you're harshly critical of the president talking about so, losing his... Yeah, sometimes the, hour, sometimes the hour of the day, George, but go ahead. <laughs> okay, well, let me try this hour then. It's, it's, it's almost 10 o'clock here on the East Coast. Just on Friday, you said you kind of doubt the president's going to run again in 2020. Why do you doubt that? Look, I, you know, was having this rhetorical situation of somebody trying to pin you down as to what you, who you may vote for in 2020. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know who's going to be running in 2020. I don't know if the president will be running in 2020. Um, so, so it was really a situation. You know how you know how television is today, uh, today, George. It's a gotcha situation. Uh, it was really just pushing back against that. But you did say this week that any GOP senator who's not conflicted is either what I'm going to quote this here comatose or pretty useless in their blindness. Yeah. So look, I think that that sure, I think uh, Republican senators have to be conflicted uh, from time to time. As I mentioned, things change daily. One day we're going to you know tariff the Euro European Union, and then we're not, thankfully. One day we're going to tariff Canada, and then we're not, thankfully. One day we're going to tariff Mexico, and then we're not, thankfully. Uh, one day we're going to get out of Syria immediately, and then we're not, thankfully. So, you know, I mean, things change uh, quickly, and that was the reason for my response. You also reported this week that something you said about the Tennessee Senate race caught the eye of Mitch McConnell, the Senate Republican leader. You had quoted saying the Democratic candidate Phil Bredson is, quote, a very good mayor, a very good governor, a very good business person. So what happened after that with Senator McConnell, and who do you support in this Senate race? Well, I'm supporting the nominee. Everyone knows that. I've sent the maximum check, plan to vote for them. What, what is unbelievable to me, George, is that the leadership of the Republican Senatorial Committee would leak out this conversation purposely to the Washington Post to get you to ask me questions about this. I, I don't even know what they're thinking. But uh, What do you think they are thinking? You know, I've been real clear. I have no idea. I mean, uh, it's, it's the most ridiculous thing I've seen politically in recent times. But uh, apparently they want you to ask me about the Tennessee race. And the answer is, you just said, so you're supporting the Republican nominee, Marshall Blackburn? Yes. I mean, it's been clear. I mean, I sent the maximum check as soon as it was determined that she was our nominee. What I said was, I've got a friend that I've been working with for 23 years on the Democratic side. Um, we've worked, I was Mayor Chattanooga, I was Commissioner of Finance for our state. We've done a lot of things together. And he's a friend. I'm not going to campaign against him, but certainly, um, you know, I'm. I've sent the maximum contribution, plan to support the nominee, and, and yet, for some reason, in their brilliance, uh, the Republican Senatorial Committee tried to create a big story out of this, so you and other stations this morning would ask me questions. I don't know what the outcome is they're looking for here, but, uh, but obviously, uh, it's again being asked. Okay. Senator Corker, thanks for your time this morning. Thank you.